So the playoffs, it is going to be. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I've already, in my mind, we're already a Premier League club. So if we get beat, I, <laughs> I'm going to be devastated. Stoke City are our opponents in the semi-final. Let's quickly review the matches that you've missed. So following on from the defeat against Fulham, we basically knew that we were fighting for the playoffs. We started that fight with a 1-0 win against Cardiff at home. Esposito with the goal in the 47th minute. We then lost at home against top of the table Watford. They are very much a Premier League side. A lot of the similar sort of players you would expect to see them whilst they're in the top flight. And Ismail Assar scored in the 21st minute to give them the only goal of the game and the win. We bounced back away from home against Leeds, this time getting a 2-1 win. Callum Robinson and Esposito with the goals. We then had a home tie against Millwall, which we won 3-2. Esposito with a brace and Callum Robinson with the other. Redden was next and we managed to get a 1-1 away draw despite going down at 10 men. Esposito with the first goal in the 34th minute to put us 1-0 up. Andrea Pereira equalised in the 67th. Felix Correa got sent off for the final 10 minutes or so and we managed to hold on. Wigan this time, a 1-0 home win. Callum Robinson with the only goal. And then an absolutely crushing 4-3 defeat in the final game of the league season against Hull City. Apo Halmir, our old boy at Barnsley, getting the first goal of the game. We did manage to bounce back in the second half, getting a couple of goals to make it a little bit more interesting. But unfortunately for us, we could not get the final goal to make it a draw. So this is how the Skybet Championship table ended up finishing. We finished in 5th place on 79 points, equal on points with Stoke City, who are, of course, today's opponents. And uh, Derby ended up missing out on automatic promotion. Fulham were the side who went up automatically. So Derby, Stoke and Burnley. Really tough sides. I think we got absolutely smashed by Stoke before, uh, just before January. Yeah, as you can see here in the October game where we played them away from home, we got beat 4-0. So that's not a great sign of things to come. Although we were down to 10 men from 30 minutes. In the reverse fixture though, we did manage to get a home win, which was 2-1. Again, down to 10 men against Stoke, but we managed to hold on for the win there. I'm confident. I'll not lie. I think we're going to beat Stoke City today. And I think we're going to make it to the playoff final, probably against Derby. So strap in folks, today is probably going to be quite a long episode. We're not going to split this up. If we do manage to get past Stoke in the semi-final, we will then be playing the final against whoever wins in the other tie. And we will find out whether we are a championship club or a Premier League club today. This is going to be the lineup then for the first game against Stoke. We are at home, so we need a good game and a good advantage going into the second leg. Inaki Pena in goal, Lonsdale, Dean, Marmol and Sehevich in the defence. Busquets, uh, Bellingham. In the centre of midfield, Felix Carrera, Mazamiru, Callum Robinson and Esposito, of course, leading the line. Now, coming into this game, obviously off the back of a pretty devastating result against Hull City in the final game. I hope our morale isn't too bad and we're able to bounce back and get a good performance out of the boys today. They come on us with a pretty similar formation to ourselves. Let's just get into the game and see how it goes. Of course, our former boy Jamal Blackman is in goal for Stoke City today, so... Maybe he can do us a favour after we uh, sign him for Barnsley, but probably not. First highlight of the game, first goal, 30 seconds in. Jude Bellingham, absolutely unbelievable. Callum Robinson coming down the left-hand side, does very well to get past his man. He whips the ball in with his left foot and Bellingham's on hand. 30 seconds. This is all these boys need, 30 seconds. Jude Bellingham, you're a star, mate. 15 minutes gone, Stoke City have the ball and they are on the attack. Play back to Ryan Woods. In the centre. If we can nick this ball and set away Esposito, we will be laughing. And we do. Mazamiru tries to set him away. He does manage to get past his man. He's in one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Jamal, let him score, please. 35 minutes in now. Stoke again down this left-hand side. Woods plays it in. Marmol clears. Mazamiru pumps it up the pitch. We'll take, we'll take defending like that all day. But Stoke come again down this right-hand side. Fulgini picks it up after the right midfielders played it back to him. We are pressing them well, but leaving gaps when we do so. They're in the box now. The ball's whipped in. No, 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 no. Don't score. Oh, he's got past his man. Open goal. Ah, he's crap. I was never worried. Never, never once. 43 minutes in now. Only a couple of minutes to go before half-time. Esposito's in behind. And Jamal, again, with a big save. And that is going to be that for the first half. Burnley actually beating Derby in the other leg we'll ignore that because we need to get past Stoke City I don't really care if it's Burnley or Derby who ends up winning if we get beat so let's get back into the second half a decent first half by us and um, we've definitely got the advantage obviously in terms of the goal scoring but in terms of the match stats as well but Stoke definitely came back into it after our first goal Nathan Collins no it wasn't it was somebody else goes close 
Sahevic with the ball on the left hand side with the throw and finds Bellingham back to himself. I was going to say, don't go for goal, Sahevic. You haven't got it in your locker. Bellingham tries to whip the ball in, comes out of Busquets on the edge. Lonsdale's offering the pass there. It's there. Esposito's there. Esposito's 19th goal of the season puts us 2 0 up. We are well in control of this tie now. If we can keep a clean sheet, fantastic stuff. 60 minutes in, basically. 30 minutes to go. Our boys really do need to hold on. Excellent cross by Lonsdale. Excellent rise by Esposito. 19 goals for the season since joining in January. He's just a he's just a perfect specimen. Only 25 minutes to go on the clock. Stoke holding possession in their own defence. Going all the way back to the goalkeeper. That's fine by me. With Nick Dean, Lonsdale's pinched the ball in. And he's set away Esposito who was onside. His third one-on-one -on -one chance. And his second goal of the game. He's 20 goals of the season. 3-0 up. We are now smashing Stoke City. Can we get a couple more just to make things even more comfortable? Uh, I think that might be asking a little bit too much. But Lonsdale does excellent work on the right-hand side to pinch the ball. And Esposito, he's third one-on-one. -on -one. He manages to get that one-on-one -on -one goal. 3-0. Another attack, 73 minutes in. Lonsdale again on this right-hand side whips it in. It's cleared by Collins. Uh, we do end up getting possession back, though, through Belling and Busquets to Mazamiru. Callum Robinson goes for goal. Say, hey, bitch, are you going to go for goal, mate? I've just dissed his shooting, didn't I? I've just absolutely dissed his shooting, and he pulls that one out the top locker. 4-0, his second goal of the season. We are absolutely cruising. Stoke City are sinking without a trace. They're going to have to have a pretty special second leg if they want to get back into this tie. That is just a beautiful finish. Right, we'll make our subs now. We are in a comfortable enough position. Adam Armstrong can come on for Felix Correa. We'll get Nathan Holland on in behind the strike and we'll get John Espinosa on for an absolutely excellent uh, Keith Lonsdale. Two assists from right back. Delighted with that. Five minutes to go. Stoke are on the attack this time. Verlinden picking up the ball in the centre. Finds Fulgini on the right-hand side. He seems to be finding pockets of space all over the place. But Harley Dean with a big kick up. Can he pinch this off Nathan Collins? No, he can't. The ball is spread to the left-hand side for Stoke. John Espinosa comes on. What a fantastic challenge that was. And he finds Bellingham in the centre. who plays the ball over the top. Esposito was in behind. Can he get his hat-trick? He certainly can. <laughs> Birmingham 5. Stoke City nil. Esposito, mate. You are just... Oh, I wish I could sign you. I really wish I could. I would, I would build every single side around Sebastiano. Unfortunately, we can't. We're just going to have to enjoy him whilst we still can. Bellingham with the ball over the top. Esposito, clinical as ever. 5-0, we are through to the final. I'm saying it now. Not really put me neck out on the line there by saying that, but uh, yeah, we are definitely in the playoff final. And now we have it full-time. Birmingham City 5 in a playoff semi-final. Stoke City 0. Fantastic performance. Because it was such a convincing win and it's looking highly likely we're going to go to the playoff final, I'm not going to live com this second leg. If Stoke City are 3-0 up at half-time, I might then start commentating, but... Uh, other than that, if I don't commentate this game, we're comfortably through. So there's only 10 minutes or so to go in the second leg. Stoke City are currently 3-2 up. But obviously, that means very little to me. We are 7-3 up on aggregate. And we will be going to the playoff final. Callum Robinson and Ryan Burke for the goals for us. Verlinden, Ian Acho, Zermal for the goals for them. Stoke City, you're in the championship next season. Who are going to be our opponents in the playoff final? It's going to be Burnley. So we won't be facing Derby County. In the playoff final, which I expected, it's going to be Burnley who finished in 6th place. So, 5th and 6th make the final. 4th and 3rd, you're out. So, how have we done against Burnley in the past? We've beaten 2-0 at home uh, in February. So, that is a very, very good sign. Before that, when was the first game? We got beat 4-0. <laughs> so, a similar situation to Stoke, really. Um, before we came in, well, we got it was actually while I was managing, we got smashed off Stoke. But before we came in, Burnley smashed Birmingham City. But now we are in charge and we beat them 2-0 at home. So leaves me feeling a little bit confident. We finished above them in the league. So that's always a positive start. Um, and Burnley, obviously, a recently relegated Premier League side. Can we do the business? Let's have a look. So there has been a couple of changes to the starting eleven. Mika Marmol goes out to the left-hand side to beat our left-back as Sahevic is injured for today's game. And Bajrami comes in as our other centre-back. Apart from that... Adam Armstrong comes in. Uh, Felix Correa is currently on the bench. He's a little bit tired, um, a little bit slightly injured, but he could be an impact sub in the second half should it be required. Esposito leads the line, of course. Blaise Machuidi. Are you kidding me? He's 36. So, uh, I mean, mental stats to die for, physical stats, that might make you die. Um, 
Obviously, Burnley have got a decent side, but I think we've got the better of them here. I fancy us today. I think we're going to win, and I think we're going to the Premier League. Please, don't, please ignore this if we get beat. First highlight of the game comes two minutes in. It's Burnley who are in possession with Berisha in the middle. Machuini, don't, uh, after I've pointed you out, don't have a storming game, please. That tends to be what happens on Football Manager. Elmas, back to Berisha. Good Munson. A lot of space on this right-hand side, but the staying through the centre. We've got a lot of bodies in the way. And Oriel Busquets pinches the ball, finds Esposito. Callum Robinson is now set away. We've got a lot of people coming down the right-hand side, Callum. Please whip the ball and don't go for goal. <laughs> you just knew it was happening. And Naki Pena with a big kick up. Callum Robinson with a great win. Finds Esposito. He's got a lot of bodies around him. So he goes all the way back to Adam Armstrong who dances into the box. Great challenge by Jack Cork. Esposito out to Keith Lonsdale. He was a hero in the first leg of the semi-final. Callum Robinson hits the bar and it gets cleared. Again on the attack. Keith Lonsdale, Adam Armstrong, Mazamiru, please. Somebody get the goal. Make our... Oh, Jude. Jude Bellingham, please. We're only 10 minutes in and I'm already so on edge. It's unbelievable. Again, coming down this right-hand side, Lonsdale with a throw and plays it a bus, gets back to Lonsdale. Can somebody whip the ball in? Busquets is the man. Esposito's there. And he goes over the bar. Mazamiro with a free kick. He plays it in. Back post. Adam Armstrong. It's cleared. Do not. Oh, my God. It is a counter-attack of dreams for Burnley. They didn't leave anybody up, so there isn't too much support there. But now they've got men forward. Bio gets two. Get past two. Elmas with the ball. He's going to play back to Bio. Is he going to score? Oh, he hits the post. <laughs> Oh, I don't think my heart could take a defeat. I don't think I could. Probably the final highlight be of the first half. And it looks like it's going Burnley's way. B.O. plays about the Reidewald. Uh, Berisha in the centre. Finds its way to Elmas. Please don't do this to me. Jack Cork switches the player to, to Hanny on this right-hand side. He whips it in back post. Elmas is there. And Burnley go 1-0 up. Oh my god. Elgif Elmas with his seventh goal of the season. And Burnley are winning. Oh, there's going to be another highlight before half-time. It's a free kick on the edge of the box. Mazamiru, please, bury this. Bury it. Oh, he hits the post. Esposito keeps the ball alive. It's cleared, though. Oh, that would have been the perfect end of the first half after going 1-0 down. Oh, come on, lads. Please, come on. We start the second half. Demand more from our boys. N anybody's having a very, very good game for us, unfortunately. And with 30 minutes to go, going to go more direct. Highlight now, it's a corner for Burnley. Berisha plays it in, can we get a clear? We well, can, but it's going to go and go back out to Berisha. Nick Pope with a big kick, Lonsdale wins it. Adam Armstrong, come on, set away Esposito. He's, oh, he could have split the defence out with a good pass. Come on, Adam, what can you do? Whip it back post. Uh, comes back out to Keith Lonsdale, can he whip it in? He can. Please, Callum Robinson. Yes, Callum Robinson with his 18th goal of the season from that left-hand side. Brings us back level 63 minutes in. We're back in the game. Thank, thank God for that. Adam Armstrong with some decent work down this right-hand side. The cross is blocked, but Lonsdale's there to back him up. The ball's whipped in. Mazamiro with a header. Robinson with the first-time finish. Great finish, that is. Birmingham 1, Burnley 1. Game on. And with that, we are going to bring on Felix Correa for Adam Armstrong on that right-hand side. Highlight. 19 minutes to go. We are on the attack. Oriel Busquets don't lose the ball there. Finds Mazamiro. Lonsdale. There's Correa if you need him. Lonsdale is carrying the ball. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Nick Pope saves. 15 minutes to go. There's a highlight. It's Burnley with a throw in and in an advanced position. B.O. Oh, it's a penalty. Oh, it's a penalty to Burnley. Inaki Pena, can you do it for us? Mika Marmol is the one who gives it away. Oh, come on. Please bail me out here. Wind steps up and wind. See if Inaki Pena, come on, son. <laughs> I just can't handle this. It's 12 minutes to go. There's still 12 minutes. We'll stick with this. This is the highlight after the penalty. No, there we are. I thought it was going to finish. Just in case Felix Correa did a madness and ended up getting us a goal. 83 minutes in, there is a highlight. Make a marmol with a ball on the left-hand side. You owe me, mate, after that penalty scare. Felix Correa. Felix Correa with his fifth goal of the season. Jude Bellingham with the assist. We are now 2-0 up. Let's, uh, let's, let's change things about a bit, shall we? So slow down our play. We're going on the counter. See if we can see out the rest of this game. But with seven minutes remaining on the clock, we are now seven minutes away from Premier League football. Great finish by Felix Correa coming on and making the difference. Come on, lads. Hold out. Five minutes. One minute. Four minutes of injury time. Please, just hold out for the rest of this game. Burnley are offering absolutely nothing. They've gone very attacking. But, oh, there's a final highlight. Felix Correa with the corner. Please, 
Esposito <laughs> wouldn't be a game without Esposito getting a goal with his 22nd goal of the season, which, if I'm thinking correctly, makes him the top scorer in the championship since January. But never mind Esposito, 3-1 Birmingham, it looks like we are getting promoted to the Premier League. Now, when oh, now, there's the scenes. Clap them in, lads. They deserve it. You give us a bit of a scare during that match, but you've ended up pulling through. Birmingham 3, Burnley 1, we're in the Premier League. And there is the official confirmation. Birmingham win in Skybet Championship playoff finals. 3-1. I'm a little bit exhausted after that. Initial budgets time, boys. What we're getting? 36 million and 500k per week. <laughs> I mean, it's not Premier League budgets in terms of the wages, but I'm happy with the 36 million. We should be able to do some good work with that. Uh, surprised by Williams' team. I know we took over when they were 19th of the championship. Uh, just sta stabilising the ship was the objective for the season, but we've managed to get ourselves promoted in our first season. And there's the confirmation that Esposito finishing top scorer. Three goals clear from the next boy. I mean, he's just a bit special, isn't he? We'll just take one final look at him because that's probably the last time we'll be managing Sebastiano Esposito. We've passed our club vision of getting promoted to the Premier League. All that sort of things is done. A plus, everybody's delighted. And we've got a big, big summer ahead of us. Looking at the squad and thinking about what I want for next season in terms of actually the players that we've got and who I think I want in my first live in the Premier League, it's these two. <laughs> so there's nine players that are currently unfulfilled that um, we'll have to sign. It's probably not going to be that significant. We we'll, we'll might have to make the likes of Mika Marmol a starter in our first eleven. Uh, maybe Sahervich on that left-hand side. Goalkeeper-wise, I really don't want to start Inaki Pena in the in the Premier League, but it might have to do. Obviously, we're losing now with loan players. Esposito's gone, Felix Correa's gone, Oriel Busquets is gone, Mazamiru's gone. We might be able to look to get some of them boys back in, but I would like to make some permanent signings as well. The rest of the squad is basically going to be used as fodder to raise funds. Adam Armstrong is wanted by Huddersfield. I'm more than happy to let him go for a decent 7 million that can have him as long as I'm getting a good significant chunk of that. Um, but Jude Bellingham is obviously going to be our starter in the centre of midfield. We will be building our side around him. I'm not going to be signing a replacement for him and Keith Lonsdale as well. He is wanted and I probably would sell him to be quite frank. If we're going to get 20 million or 15 million for him I probably would. Because although he's a very young talented English right back. Um, I think that will get better with not that much of an outlay so you know it's it's going to be a massive massive summer ahead of us there's going to be a lot of big changes and big signings over the course of the summer and i'm really really excited to see it through to end today's episode then end of season awards and stuff i really don't do you care do you really care end of season awards bellingham player of the season callum robinson second no esposito are you joking me i mean robinson did get 15 goals from the left-hand side. Jeremy Bella with the goal of the season. Mika Marmol was the signing of the season for 200k. Esposito was the young player of the season. We'll quickly say this goal. Here it is here. It was a game against Swansea late on. Jeremy Bella pinches the ball on the right-hand side. Drives forward. Doesn't look... I mean, it's a decent goal. Decent. So it doesn't look like the board are trying to make any changes to the club culture or the club vision. So playing attacking football, playing entertaining football, developing players using the club's youth systems all absolutely fine by me. Things we just do rather naturally. Esposito there, confirmed top goal scorer winner. Well done, my boy. You, How many goals did you get? 22 goals in 23 games. <laughs> I think he is a large reason why we've just been promoted. I need a little bit of a break after that game. That was absolutely tremendous stuff. Getting through to the Premier League is absolutely delightful at the first time of asking. It's going to be a huge summer ahead of us. Do Can Birmingham beat Barnsley? Barnsley finished sixth. I find it highly unlikely we will, but we are going to give it a good go. Barnsley ended up finishing 14th in the Premier League in the season after we've left, which isn't too bad at all, really. I did. I was half expecting them to get relegated, to be quite honest here. 15 points clear of the relegation zone. Uh, who was the best performers? Let's have a quick look. Lewis Montenu, um, Montenu uh, got how many goals? 14 goals in 38 games in the Prem, worth £46 million. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he's poached in the summer. Ian van der Heer is not getting much game time now and he is absolutely fantastic. We are going to scout him and try and bring him in for Birmingham. I doubt it's going to happen. Maybe he might be available for a loan. Um, any of our other boys, Nicholas Capaldo is still there doing excellent work. Fausto Vera, Alan Franco. Um, just some great signings were made at Barnsley and I'm hoping to be able to do the same again at Birmingham 
If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. We're in the Premier League. We've got promoted. Come on, it's worth a like. Get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.